Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to introduce um, today's Executive Lecture Series speaker, Jessica Devenish, President and CEO of CheckNet. Jessica's professional experience and drive is directly connected to her wonderful family that stands beside her. She has been in the collection business for over 25 years. Jessica was motivated and taught by her great mentor and father, who was the, quote, original in our industry. Jessica is recognized in her industry as an expert in debt collections, credit card services, and electronic payment processing. Jessica has worked her way up in the family or in the industry starting as a collector, then starting her own agency with her family in 1997. Jessica is currently the president and CEO of CheckNet. Jessica is an active representative of the Utah Association of Collectors and was the acting president of the association from 2005 to 2006. She has received certifications from the American Collectors Association in both first and third party collections. Jessica is also a member of the Utah Valley Magazine editorial board. Jessica currently lives in Springville, Utah with her husband Kelly of 17 years and their five children, Jamie, 16, Courtney, 13, and Tristan, 9. And they are also the lucky guardians of their niece Libby, 18, and nephew Caden, who's 16. The kids call their little family the Devonish Seven, and you'll see more about them in a moment. And there is no question that the seven-person Devonish family is kept very busy with all their many activities and schedules. Living close to our parents and sisters and working with them on a daily basis is a great pleasure in Jessica's life. Jessica enjoys meeting new people and seeing her children, her family, her friends, her staff, her clients, and her fellow business leaders succeed. At CheckNet, they do three things better than anyone. Collections, merchant services, and electronic checks, electronic checks all under one roof. CheckNet is locally owned and operated by Jessica's family. They are established leaders since 19, or 1966. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Jessica Devenish. Hello, thank you for having me. When Brad Mertz asked me to come and share my story with all of you, I put some notes together and hopefully each of you will pick up one thing from our time today that may empower you in some way. So first of all, I wanted to talk about the road to nowhere. Brad suggested that I simply just tell my story. Stories of our trials, lessons, wrong roads, smooth roads, the journey, the challenges, the stepping stones, having the fearless mind it takes to be a business owner, a business leader, an avid professional in the field you choose. Running that incredible race every single day, just like all of you. Now after college, there will be a new race. And throughout your careers, there will be a variety of titles on this road where you are heading. We all want to leave our mark and do something extraordinary. Before I jump into my stories and put myself out there, stories of my trials and celebrations to get where we are today, let me tell you a little bit about me. We, our family, as he said, own a collection agency in Provo, Utah called CheckNet. Born and raised in good old Mapleton City, Utah. Wherever you choose to land in your career, pick somewhere beautiful for you and your family, your future. It may be one of the most important decisions you ever make. Okay, so me, who is this woman standing in front of you? This is a picture of me in third grade. On the hills of Mapleton, my family had fruit farms known as the Hillview Fruit Farms. My grandfather was well known for the many people he employed way back when. I still hear stories of he owned the first Model T car in Mapleton, and he was the first president of the JCs. I said, what's a JC? They said, the JC is the junior chamber. It was the start of a collective group of business owners to improve that was, that was around them. The JCs worked united, and they, in our small city, they're responsible for a few amenities that still stand today, like the tennis courts, the swimming pool, the city park. And I think I'm kind of proud, uh oh, my thing keeps moving, <laughs> that um, my family had a part in that. Let's talk about sense of community. It's a part of our family heritage, and that's why I think I love meeting new people. So who is Jessica Devenish? We all have many definitions, names, nicknames, or titles, and here are a few so you could get to know me. I am the daughter of Paul and Shanna Karnaseka, two people I adamantly admire. They taught me to love the mountains, hunting, camping, fishing, and playing in the dirt. And I always say that if my children adore me half as much as I do my parents, I'll be one lucky lady. I am one of three sisters. I am the oldest. On some days, if I'm confident enough to say I'm the oldest and the wisest, Lacey is the middle child and the tomboy, and Sydney, she's the party animal. She keeps our life interesting. I've been married for 17 years to Kelly. He is truly my better half. One thing is for sure, we make a great team. We have five kids, 
five plus two is seven, and as you said, our kids call us the Devonish Sevenish. So here we have the class president, my little buddy Tristan, my dancer, my redneck, mullet to boot, my grocery getter, and the big kid, Libby. The kids named us Devonish Sevenish a couple years ago as they got older and realized we really are a team. There's never a dull moment, so we have to work together to make things rock and roll. Our kids are very creative. Besides the Devonish Sevenish, our newest name is the Seven Dwarfs, and they named me Happy. I will say I like that title. I don't know if they were scared to give me grumpy, but they gave me happy. Dad's grumpy most of the time, they say. Um, along with happy, I'm a business leader, an entrepreneur, a mother, a wife, a sister, a daughter, an aunt, and a friend. I can be defined in many words. As you go out into the business world, ask yourself, who am I, who do I want to be, and how do I want to be seen? I read an article that was pretty interesting. It talks about naming yourself in six words. It might be a challenge to describe yourself or your life in six words, but sometimes isn't less more. These are some of my favorites that I wanted to share with you. I think many of you may relate to some of these and give you some insight to yourself. It might be a challenge, and your life story could probably fill a thousand pages. And for me, when I did this exercise, I picked lover, loyal, family, open-minded, friend, survivor, and I challenge each of you to do the same. I also decided through the process that I'm still searching for the best me. So let's just step back. Looking back, these are the years that are some milestones for me. I can't believe it's 2013, as I look back in our industry today, a bad debt collection agency. Consumers view us as the bad guy, and that's okay. That's the role we play when we're calling the person that owes the bad debt. Businesses, however, view us as income producers, a finder of lost revenues. We are one of the most important part of a company's revenue process. You need to collect money to keep the doors open. I thought about our industry in 1997 when we started CheckNet. I had just had a baby. I was home for four days, and I went back to the office with baby in tow. That was crazy, and I don't know what I was thinking. Not to mention I was super fat. I was very tired, although I was excited about our new venture, both as a mom and a business owner. I was 25 and too young to realize the next step in my life I was about to endure. Let's look at 1988. I began in the business when I was 15, 1988. I worked for my dad's collection agency at that time, and I started as a manager rat. I had to do all of the things that nobody else wanted to do. It's ironic, as president and CEO, I still find myself doing the things that nobody else wants to do. Progress? I don't know. And of course, where it all began. My dad opened his first agency in Utah in 1966. Of course, I didn't exist then, but I do recall those early days driving around in my mom's blue car, delivering bad check bulletins to clients. Now, you may notice when you go write a check and they run your check through the reader, we didn't have electronic devices then, so we passed out a bad check bulletin that merchants referred to before they took someone's check. I remember going to the laundromat next door to my dad's office so we could see him. He was always at work. The working parent continues on. I distinctly remember him making notes on three by five cards filing them in drawers. There were no computers back then. Being the boss's daughter, I always had something to prove in 1988, so luckily I was up to the challenge. At that time, my father had four offices in the state of Utah and over 150 employees, and I worked my way from manager rat to top salesman. At the age of 18, I signed the biggest client the company had ever seen up to that point. It was 1991. The company, excuse me, I think you have more to prove with all eyes on you. Maybe that's where I learned to flourish under pressure. Of course, the client didn't know my age at the time. I would change the subject as needed when asked. I didn't want to give it away in case that worked against me. It's funny how when you're 18, you want to be older, and when you're older, you wish you were 18. As I went out into the business world, my dad always taught me about meeting people. That's probably the most important thing I could do. And watching him in action taught me well. He said, always get out there, Meet other collection agency owners. Learn, ask, but always ask. He would say, go to the local chamber events, 
get out there into the national industry conferences, but once you're there, seek out the biggest collection agency, the most successful one you can find, and ask them how they did it. Their key to success. It's the only way you learn. You will find that we are all the same in many ways. Don't be intimidated or fearful, he told me. Just get out there. When I reflect back on all those years in the industry, for me, there's 26 now, I think of the adversity, our differences. Each one of, our collection, each one of the collection agencies I have met, they all have their own claim to fame. Each of us has a hot button that we think makes us better than the other guy. Let's hope when we're challenging our competitor, we're challenging ourselves, putting each of us, pushing each of us to be better. In many cases, sometimes rare, but always great in my opinion, those direct competitors are my best friends and my colleagues. Competition is healthy. In the end, I believe we're all people looking to work together in some way, whether it's a new customer, a vendor, or another business professional, we all have a common goal, to engage in a business community and meet other professionals. There are many ways to meet other professionals. Last week, I believe you heard from Jared Stewart, Corporate Alliance. Him and I started our companies at the same time. We lean on each other a lot. Entrepreneurs Organization is a group of entrepreneurs. We get together once a month for four hours, and we're able to talk about the 5% of things that stress us out, the sleepless nights, the cash flow crunches, the things that only other business owners can understand. Local chamber events, BNI, it's called Business Networking International, and about every city in Utah has cha a chapter, maybe one or two. It's another way to get your name out there. There's also Utah Technology Council, and one of my favorites is LinkedIn. If you don't know about LinkedIn, it's similar to Facebook, it's for the business community, and it is another great way to get your name out there. This is just a few, there are simply too many to name here today. And my advice, don't buy a membership unless you plan to use it. I meet lots of people that join one of these organizations and a year later they tell me that it didn't do anything for them. And I ask them, well what did you give to the organization? Because I believe what you give to the organization you get back. If you go and you intend to attend, you will love them and they will be a big part of your growing. Corporate Alliance has been for me as in many others. I believe that it's important to hire talent, hire better than yourself, hire great salesmen, because without sales, we don't have a business. The most important thing you get is getting your product or service out to the market. You need to hire awesome people and surround yourself with people smarter than yourself. I cannot stress this enough. It is an important factor to your success. Then you must hold them accountable. The biggest mistakes I've made over the years is holding on too long to somebody that I really thought could do the job. I've learned to set expected benchmarks and specific and detailed agreements with my staff. Every person in my organization needs to know the role that they play. With salesmen, they are walking billboards for your company. You need to make sure they represent you accordingly. You need to make sure they're filling their pipeline to be out there more than your competitor or your first job. Be there more than the guy sitting next to you. You need to show up emotionally and professionally because it matters. One of our interview questions, the most important one to us, we ask, if you were to rate yourself on a scale from one to 10, what would the number be and why? Anything less than a seven, we never let them through to a second interview. In our office, we measure three areas, attitude, attendance, and performance, and they're all key. Someone can have a great attitude, but if their attendance doesn't measure to the rest of the team, then they can't be part of our team. If their performance doesn't meet their attitude, then they can't be part of the team. So those three things are really important in our organization, attendance, attitude, and performance. Partner with business professionals. Do what you do best and hire others to help you expand your brand. It's nature to stick to what you like best, so make sure you hire elsewhere to help you reach your goals. Not only do I talk about hiring awesome staff, I also believe you need to hire great marketing and branding teams, great website developers. Advertise. You need to control your message so others don't. Magazines, chamber newsletters, blogs, your own newsletter. There's lots of mediums to get your name out there. And there's great sales coaching companies like Griffin Hill that some of you may know. They're a local company. I've even hired a personal business coach throughout my career. And you may as well as you 
go out your career. It's really a great way to push yourself and hold yourself accountable. Client relationship management tools like Salesforce, that's just one. There's Google Alerts, so anytime your company name or your personal name is out into the web, you know about it firsthand. Social media, what works best for your company. There's a lot and it continues to grow every day. There's online surveys, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, Pinterest is used for a lot of retail customers, blogs. Sometimes it's difficult to know where to start. I've been doing this for a long time and we still change every year. Some, you can't be afraid to try it all and then you can't be afraid to stop what isn't working. Let's talk about unity. Whether you have partners, coworkers, executive teams, you need to ask the question, is everyone on the same path? What does the company want to look like when you grow up? What do you want to look like when you grow up? Do you want to start a business? If so, do you want to have an exit strategy? Your first job, is there room to grow there? What are my opportunities here? What other positions are available? You might be surprised how often things are detailed and specific aren't detailed and specific until times are tough and things are tight. Don't wait until things are tight. Do it before they arise. Although the course you set might not be exactly the way you go, but at least having the discussion up front is a powerful tool for your team. Expect the unexpected. You never know what is around the corner. There's recessions, there's layoffs, there's staff issues, late deliveries, unavailable products, low sales, steeper competitive pricing, there's stress in the workplace, learn to manage it effectively. It may come from many different sources and they may all come at once at you, not one at a time. You may have to change your ad values. Over the years we've added credit card services and electronic payments to really add value to our clients in the marketplace. You may have to redirect your position in the market, whatever that means for you. You gotta be open and ready for it when it comes. It's not if, it's when in my experience. There will be challenges, stepping stones, and maybe a little of each. Expect the unexpected. This is a picture that I wanted to share of my dad and his partner in the early 70s. And the reason for sharing it is because things change fast in the blink of an eye. Some of you are graduating soon, and I'm assuming there were days that felt like weeks and weeks that felt like months. And looking back, you think, where did the time go? So what will be coming for you in the next 30 years? You may be the one to invent it. You may be the one to bring it to the marketplace. Be diligent, be aware, be in the moment. Control the controllable. The roles we play. There are many doors to choose from. Some days you're the teacher. Some days you are the student. What is your role and what does it mean to your company? Your team, your family, your spouse. What does it mean to you? You need to capture your strengths first. It will help you know what you're good at. You can, can you always like your role? Yes, if you find the skill to succeed. You need to own your place and your role. What is your role with dealing, dealing with stress? Do you have a plan of action? Do you know where you're going? Intend to attend before you walk through the door. You need to know your personal plan and you need to know your business plan. I wanted to talk about non-compete agreements and non-disclosures. Whether you're the employer or the employee, you need to be aware of your role. I wanted to share a recent experience we had. I had an employee who was selling for me, and a few months, it was about four months into his work with us, I found out that he was receiving a salary from not only my company, but from a competitor as well. He was working for both of us. So I wanted to share a little bit about the principal agency relationship. In this, Checknet is the principal or the employer, and the agency is the employee. So I'm gonna to read to you the definitions in our policy handbook, and as governed by the state of Utah. The principal agency relationships require assent, benefit, and control. Assent is the informal agreement between the company and the employee, where employee acts for company. The benefit, the employee conducts for the benefit of the company. Control, the company must have the right to control the employee by having the power to su supervise the manner of employee's performance. Number two, the duties owed to employee, excuse me, duties owed to company by employee. Duty of care and loyalty, duty to obey instructions. 
to act in good faith the way a prudent person would with regard to their own business or a like position. There's a duty of loyalty to act in good faith with reasonable belief that acts in the best interest of the company. The employee may never self-deal to the detriment of the company, unsurp a company's opportunity, or take it for himself instead of giving it to the company, or make a profit at the company's expense without disclosure to the company. And the remedies for a company for breach of loyalty by an employee, they may recover losses caused by the breach, and they may recover potential lost profits made by the breach. Be mindful, be fair, act professionally, deal ethically, plain and simple. If you question it, don't do it. You may hear, non-competes never stick. That's not true, they do sometimes. So my advice, when receiving pay for a job, obey and be loyal or don't do it. This is our family today, although this picture is a couple years old. Remember earlier when I mentioned expect the unexpected? Here's a story to help hit home. After we'd been in business for about six years, we had an unfortunate chain of events. There are two. In corporations, generally you have partners. Partnerships are tricky. They are important though, but they can be interesting to say the least. Make sure you have non-competes, even for partners. Make sure you have operating agreements in place. However, don't be surprised, agreement or not, people are who they are and no piece of paper will change that. There's two experiences that I'd like to share with you. The first, here we have a partner, I will call him Sticky Fingers. He was taking money, the one that got him caught is he was walking around the office bragging about buying his 16-year-old daughter a car. That was the end of that. Five years later, story number two, we will call this partner Homer. Homer decided he wanted to do something on his own without us. And one typical work day, we arrived at the office bright and early and 10 of our workstations were missing not to mention a few other important assets. And he was our technical and software master. He was the only knower of all things technical. You know that IT world that only so few know? The place where they speak their own language? With no answer or reason, he was just gone. He'd walked out. A short time later, maybe it was about a week, I had just started to accept the reality of our lost partner. I was saddened by the loss of what I thought was a friend. A friend who knew everything about CheckNet from the inside out. He had started the company with us in 1997. Still trying to recall what went wrong with him. He never said, and I'm sorry about that. Our attorney walked out. We will call him Simpson. Wait, first Homer and now Simpson? Yet literally in the middle of the day, him and his staff walked out and left these glasses on all of the phones, on all of the computers, by all the computers. We, were, we didn't know if this was a bad dream. We were stunned and confused, and a short, hour later, I get a call from my previous landlord. He said, hey, Jessica, you need to come by. I don't know what's going on. Homer and Simpson just leased a new office space for me, and something just doesn't seem right. Can you come down and talk to me? This is us. Insert blank stare here. Crazy story, right? And it's hard to believe. For us, it was unbelievable. And I'm sure no one here has ever had a bad experience in their lifetime. And it won't be the first. It certainly isn't the last. You should know that 18 months later, Homer came to our family and begged for our forgiveness, saying he had made the mistake of his life. The partnership of Homer and Simpson didn't last, shocker. And in the middle of all these trials, we still have a company to keep running. We have 40 families to take care of. We have to maintain our cool, we have to keep our staff informed, professionally and of course carefully when matters of this happen. We have to keep our clients happy and maintain our course of business. We had to keep our head above ground and never let them see us sweat. In the end, those challenges made us stronger because we were fo focused to look at each situation with new eyes and keep our chin up, which wasn't an easy thing to do at that time. As a family, we decided after these events, it made us realize we really needed to rely more heavily on each other. We knew we could trust each other as family and the direction of our family was clear. We felt strongly at that point, one of us needed to go to law school to be an attorney. No more attorney could do this to us again. So you guessed it, we drew straws, and who would take the leap? Who would go? We were all such integral parts of the company, we couldn't lose any of us. But how could we not? We drew straws, and Lacey drew the short straw. Lacey's the middle sister, the tomboy I introduced earlier, 
and she went to law school after 14 years of graduating with her bachelor's of science degree from UVU. In August of 2009, we did have some great news. Lacey was accepted to law school. It was official. Our vice president was leaving us. Lacey was accepted to BYU J. Reuben Clark Law School. She was gone overnight, literally, away into law school, into her own personal challenges and stepping stones. Three years of goodbye, gone overnight, literally. So to make it clear for those that don't know, in a small business, we are really tight on costs, expenses, and hiring, and replacing Lacey was not an easy task for us. There was no way we could do it. So we had this brilliant idea that Jessica could wear an extra hat. I already knew what the role was, and I had played the part before. We could easily shuffle a few duties, and I could take on the biggest part of the job. It was only three short years, right? Because clearly, I was not wearing enough hats, so let's put on a few more. Quickly, you will see that the good news for our family has some bumpy roads, mistakes, if you will. My mistakes were clear two years in, not so clear at that time. The roller coaster begins, the peaks and the valleys. I was so far into the trees, I could not see from the in inside. Things were going smoothly at first. All the right people were on the bus, and we were heading in the right direction. But here comes the first bump. Our CFO at that time, who had been with me for six years, had to go in for back surgery. Not a big deal, we can handle this. We knew ahead of time, and we had a replacement for the six weeks she was out. We knew we would just be fine. Fine? Fine is freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. I hope you have as much fun with this as we have, recognizing although things may be stressful, we're fine. It's fine. So back to the story. So when she comes back with a full plate of work on her desk that she was the only one that knew about, but wait, this is where it gets interesting, she isn't able to come back full time for an unexpected additional four weeks. Well, the four weeks turned into an indefinite time frame because her back surgery didn't fuse and she had to go back for a second time. And she was gone, goodbye, overnight, literally. Needless to say, we rehired and are moving forward. There were some ripples, just a few, but they were certainly real. Looking back, maybe it was supposed to happen. The team we have now is stronger, and I've learned a lot from the unexpected. Oh, and in the middle of all this, I think there may have been a recession. And then a few months later, our GM gives me his notice. He was kind to me. He gave me six weeks to reorganize. It was a great move for him and his family to move to Oregon. But again, he was another IT resource. That knowledge and expertise that in a small business, only so few know. He was gone overnight, literally. So Lacey, the CFO, and the GM are now all gone. That was a two-year chapter that taught me many important lessons. Lessons and mistakes I hope I will never repeat again. I believe if my memory serves me right, as I get older, things tend to get fuzzy. I think I had an audit during that two-year time, too. I may have blocked that out. As you can see, my time quickly was spent in the business, not on my business. So again, we hired to expand the team after it about killed me. You should know that my true love is sales and marketing and meeting new people. I really love that challenging world. At this point, with so much change internally, I didn't see the clients as much as I had before, and I didn't meet the sales team as often I should have. As you can imagine, the sales started to fall below par. And I thought, wow, how? How could this happen to me? But those hats were bearing me, and I couldn't see clearly. I didn't see at all. Looking back, it's easy to see the mistakes now. The first one, saving money on not replacing Lacey, not to mention handling the audit alone. I needed people, the right people to fill the right roles. I couldn't do it alone. If we are not moving forward, then we are not growing. I thought I was growing the company, but looking back, I was the bottleneck. I was buried under all those hats that I thought I was wearing so well. Mistake number two, people versus process. We found that we had built the position around the person, not the person around the position. We had no duplication of roles. Again, hard lesson learned. Obviously, we endured. Lacey survived law school. She graduated in 2012. We excelled because we do that. We expanded our great teams, brought our numbers back where they needed to be. And on May 15th of this year, Lacey is sworn in as an attorney. There was a lot of sacrifice and a lot of character building for all of us. There was a lot of lessons learned. Let's talk about being prepared and not fighting. 
I wanted to talk a little bit about privacy and technology. Another lesson in the, air, in the professional world that is getting a lot of attention more every day is technology and privacy. There's laws, regulations, there's rules, procedures, government entities, state and federal, that are all necessary regulatory bodies for businesses. In business, we are required to maintain compliance. Mistakes may happen, but my advice, never operate out of arrogance or knowing negligence when it comes to technology and privacy. Mistakes will happen. I know that firsthand. Working to diligently upgrade your firewalls, internal security features, increase and improve written policies, be aware of informed of future harms in the land of technology because they change every day. And in business, it is your responsibility to know them. The state and federal regulation, they'll tell you that. It will make you better, a more intelligent company, a better employee also, knowing your company has taken steps to ensure your, your customers' private data. With all those experience behind me, I had some learning points that I wanted to share. If you are all things to everyone, you are an expert in nothing. Stick to what you know, hire others to help you reach your goals. Every day, try to perform better than the day before. And as soon as you reach one objective, there's another one waiting in its place, so expect it. Having the fortitude to readdress your course, even if it means you failed or made a mistake. A mistake is okay, how you handle the mistake will live long after the mistake took place. The next level will take great strength and character of mind, so own it. As your skill sets continue to grow, enjoyment continues to build, so have fun doing it. Know your mottos and mission statement. When we started CheckNet, we, know, we knew we didn't want to be the biggest, we wanted to be the most profitable. At the end of the day, it was all about profits. Now some roads aren't so rocky as you move along in your professional career. Our client base is vast and strong. We have an amazing family of clients, hooray for that. And in our situation, working for family is right for us. It's been a well-traveled road. Our family component and dynamic that we have just works. These three women are my best friends. We get along most days. We often have to agree to disagree, a learned trait, often challenge. Lacey's the one on the left, then me, then Sydney, and my beautiful mom. I not only work with these women, I work with my parents, my father too, he's still in the business, and both of my brother-in-laws, and my husband. And yes, over the years, we have had cousins, friends, neighbors, relatives, relatives of relatives, and it works for us. We do business with people we know, like, and trust. Occasionally, we get criticized for that decision. Other days, we get high five for making it work. Either way, we stay confident in our path and decisions to love what we do. The passion is in all of us. Some of you are probably thinking, and you work with your husband, and how is that? I get asked that a lot, but I truly do love it. There is an honesty and openness working with my family, and in that, we all hold dear. Success. Brad asked me to talk a little bit about success and how I saw it. Our key to success as a family is simple yet profound, communication. Working with my father, he taught me more valuable lessons, but the one that really rings true is communication, and he continues to teach me every day. He taught me to treat others the way you want to be treated. That is non-negotiable. Work hard, play harder, which is one of our models I'll share in a little bit. Be a mentor, lead by example. Be an active manager in your organization. Stay involved in your industry news. Know it before it knows you. Celebrate your wins. Sometimes they get lost, but pat yourself on the back regularly. Always hire better than yourself. Recognize and redirect your faults. Use we, not I. You are only as good as the people around you. What are the metrics for success? What are your metrics for success? Know them, question them, review them. Another success in my life is my children and the health of my family. I recently had a friend who has a 13-year-old boy who was diagnosed with leukemia, and he has taught our kids more compassion and caring than anything else could have. It gives us an opportunity to recognize our blessings every day. Success to me is knowing that my kids are proud of me. In 2008, I was the cover story for Utah Valley Magazine, and the thing I remember most about that is my kids taking that magazine to school and showing it to all their friends. Success to me is being a proud parent. My oldest daughter, Libby, 
She'll be coming here next year and she wants to go into the nursing program. Jamie's running for student council today. She'll find out if she makes class president her junior year of high school. Caden, the teacher told me he's a welding genius. He gets that from his dad. Courtney, she's Miss Uncongeniality. She makes me work hard for my money. And Tristan, he'll be 10 years old in two weeks. And he still says, Mom, you're the gal I love the most. Success comes in many forms, so be ready. Be ready to celebrate your wins. I wanted to talk a little bit about culture, defining our culture, because a culture in a business is very important. I suggest if you're going to define it, you must build it with intent. At CheckNet, we set the stage for an environment where we are all teachable. These are a few of the pictures on our walls, our work hard, play harder motto. And then we have a large 10 foot mur mural of running horses. The horses might not be culture, that's personal preference. But the quote reads, together we achieve. Now that's our culture. And then we have a whiteboard devoted to a monthly theme. This is our summer grill board. And we also have a little Malta Palm in our office. Her name is Sugar. She roams around the office in an effort to be our guard dog. And she always makes the board in some way. We really tried to make our office a family environment and having a little dog around the office has certainly done that. We also have our monthly words to live by. These are areas of personal development we devote our time to. We have a wall of pride, our mission statements, and many of client letter of recommendations that we're proud of. We have our core fundamentals, our key performance indicators to make sure our industry, our company, our goals are always being met. We involve the team to create and sustain buy-in on all of our goals. We continue to do team building exercises twice a month. We have our culture words plastered all over the wall of our boardroom to remind us daily who we are and what we stand for. And yes, we keep adding them as time goes on and as we learn. And sometimes we've even removed a word or two because things change. Another company that's really helped us a lot is a company called Persigenics. They do personality assessments. We really like that at our office because we believe that we're communication experts and you need to know how other people like information received, not necessarily how you like information. And one of the things that we really like in our office is the choice pyramid. This may seem simple, but bear with me. Life is about choices, so in our company, we love this model. If you start at the bottom, the first step in any decision is making a choice. You make the choice to set a good agreement. Agreements that fail, fail because of one of two areas, a reason or an excuse. You decide. Setting good agreements makes commitments real. If both sides are aware of the expectation, commitment drives results. Results that are followed through ultimately give yourself self-esteem and others trust in you, which you can see is at the very top of the pyramid because we all want to be someone who is trusted. It's proven to be a powerful tool in our company. And personally for me and my kids, we model the choice pyramid at home. Learning, improving, and growing. Always looking better, always looking to better what you're doing. Personal achievement coach Craig Manning, who was with the company called Griffin Hill, he comes to our office once a month and he does trainings with our whole staff. And this is his book, The Fearless Mind. He teaches us being open to learn new ways, even if you don't have the time. His book, The Journey of Life, teaches us to be teachable. All things being equal, the mentally tough will always come out on top. He teaches us that life is a performance, whether you're on the field, you're in the courtroom, or running a household. Many of us, when asked to perform, are overcome by fear. We lose our confidence and allow our insecurities to hinder us. He teaches us that 50% of our potential is dormant because we emotionally react to life. 50% of our potential is dormant because we emotionally react to life. I repeated that twice because it is a very powerful statement. He teaches us that high-performing individuals have mastered the art of balance, and living in the present is one of the most important mental skills we can learn. In short, I believe strongly, and my experience reminds me, there are two things that mold and shape our character, the books we read and the people that we meet. I also have another book, Book of Awakening, 
written by a gentleman who had cancer, and he wrote this book, so every day there's an expert, a book of awakening on how you can live in the moment every single day. It's a really powerful book. I give this book to my clients and to family and friends whenever they're really struggling in their life. Whether roads are right or wrong, all our trails have created and sustained the foundation of who we each are. When you feel the weight, you still have to keep going. You can't fear the failures or stop walking. The truth is, for me and my story, we had to keep walking. If certain things wouldn't have happened, I would have missed out on some great success and some awesome failures. Putting all our pieces of the puzzle together, one person, one mistake, and one celebration, and one win at a time. Maybe we wouldn't have worked together as a family if the bad partnerships wouldn't have happened the way they did. Lacey wouldn't have gone to law school if we hadn't had trials that is so great for us now. We wouldn't have the great staff we have now if we hadn't met some of those challenges. And don't forget those stepping stones. If certain stones hadn't been in our path, maybe we wouldn't be who we are today. In the case of my niece and nephew, the same is true. We lost our brother-in-law in a horrible car accident, but it has really changed our lives to have my niece and nephew in our home with all of us. It's the new ventures, the new innovations. It is opening your eyes to change. Another great book I brought is Who Moved My Cheese? There's also a kid's fable that my kids really like. It talks about change. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. I will leave you today with a few final thoughts. You gotta keep walking. The lessons learned are always changing, even if those shoes seem a little bigger first. Life is about choices. It's mostly about forgiveness, ourselves included. It's about learning and ultimately taking action. No matter how many times there's familiar road, there always seems to be a first step. No matter how long I've been in business or been a mom, a daughter, a sister, or a wife, there always seems to be a first step because the lessons are, the lessons are evolving in my journey. Many of you will be working parents. You will struggle with balance, so be kind to yourself. Celebrate the small wins. You will be flooded with choices. Do I stay home from the conference or do I go to Courtney Science Fair? Do I go to Jamie's piano recital or deal with this client issue? For me, I'm still learning. I've learned time with my kids is important. My biz will be there tomorrow. The science fair for Courtney will not. Craig Manning also teaches us to be in the present, control the controllable. Being in the past only offers worry or guilt. Being in the future, in your mind, only offers fear of the unknown. So don't fear or don't worry. It's a powerful statement and a reminder to stay in the moment. Live in the present and embrace the fearless mind. No one else can travel that road for you. You must travel it yourself. In closing, business is about pro profits, and I've talked about that today. This is our family, all of our kids. It's about success, it's about failures, but mostly about family. That's what we work for anyway, isn't it? It's a better life to provide for our family. We're building our first home right now, and we plan to move in the second week of May which is a huge thing for our family. We're so excited, and one we've waited really long for. Once you leave UVU and go into the workplace, be deliberate with your choices, choices that offer you high self-esteem, and choices that let others know you're a person they can trust. I would dare say that all of us in, the room, in this room are leaders in our own way. Leaders generally ask the questions. Leaders hold people accountable, themselves included. Leaders know how to say thank you. And great leaders know that a simple thank you can go a long way inspiring others to produce their best work. Leaders grow, leaders change, leaders are proactive, not reactive. So go out there and be extraordinary because we will all be watching and cheering you on from the sidelines. Thank you for your time and attention today and I hope you had one takeaway that may leave you inspired or informed in some way. Thank you. Questions? Are there any questions? I can't see very well. Okay. You know, we don't plan to franchise, but we're currently in the process of getting licensed in all 50 states. We're only licensed in seven states right now. Any others? Can't see. 
You know, one thing I will share, when we started our company, if somebody asked me if I had an exit strategy, I was kind of offended, because this is what I wanted to do for forever. And now if you ask me if I have an exit strategy, heck yes, I do. My plans totally change, because business is hard, and you, and you give up a lot. And so asking me about an exit strategy, I do, yes, now. Any others? Okay, well, thank you so much. Appreciate it.